Tonight, we're going to be looking at the familiar story of creation, but this is, to me, one of the most important truths that we need to be communicating today, um, in our, our, especially in our culture that has so embraced science and such, but we're going to get in this uh, here in just a moment, or in a moment. We're going back to the beginning, all the way back to the beginning of all things. We're going to be talking about the story or the truth of creation. And it's absolutely a story that we as believers need to be listening to. Remember, our Bible engagement journey is titled Listen right now. The, the, our ability to listen to God's word, listen to his voice, listen to his spirit. How many know that God is speaking? Amen? Amen. Amen? How many know that tonight? Teenagers, do we know that? This evening, Mason's kind of got his hand up there and all that. I, no, listen, God speaks to us. And he moves in, in mighty ways. And as he is speaking to us through scripture, the story of creation is one that we need to take hold of. There's many stories in the word, but listen to me. Creation in itself is an extremely important thing for us to understand, for us to embrace, for us to receive as Genesis tells us the story. Here's why. If we do not listen and receive what the word of God has to say about the beginning, then you might as well write off the rest. Pastor, wait a minute. How, how can that be? Because if you don't believe those first few words of Genesis 1-1 that says, in the beginning, God created, then what follows in Scripture won't make sense. And I know that there are some individuals out there, even within Christian circles, that would try to bend and try to shape these different things, try to marry science with creationism and all this other kind of stuff. Listen to me. You can keep your science all day long. I'll stick with Genesis. Hello? Because what's really cool are the scientists that are out there that have really dug deep in this and are looking for the truth. Many have come to the idea that all of their findings point to a designer, to someone who put all of this together. Now, they may not be willing to say who it is or what it is, but they're willing, at least willing to acknowledge, hey, there is no way this came together on its own. Unfortunately, scientists that typically come to that conclusion are written off and discredited. But here's the point tonight. We have to take these first words literally. In the beginning, God created. Do you believe that tonight? We know tonight that God literally spoke the universe, the heavens, the earth, all of life, everything that we know tonight, church, he spoke it into motion. Hello? And make no mistake about it tonight, when God speaks or when God spoke in this moment, all of creation listened and obeyed. He created the heavens. He created the earth. He created the sun, the moon, the stars. He created the plants, the animals, and people. And you and I, we were created in his image and likeness. He lovingly designed us with a unique plan and purpose for our lives. We somewhat talked about that this morning. God is our creator tonight. And we, humankind, we are his crowning creation. All of this is true, but the problem is our world is doing a pretty effective job of trying to deny that truth and filling hearts and minds with a narrative church that is simply not true. We are teaching kids in school and college and, like, and the like what science has to say about our world or at least the parts that science wants us to to hear. And these findings would try to tell us that we are the result of happenstantial events and that all that we have ever known, all that we've ever seen is nothing more than an accident. It would tell us that when all of the right ingredients just happen to come together, they happen to find just the right mixture in order to create matter, to create the elements, and so forth. According to science, there is no purpose, there is no design, there is no designer. There is just a long list of accident after accident after accident that results in the world and the universe as we know it. And yet, 
humans, people, we know otherwise. How can I make that, uh, that declaration? Well, for instance, the truth that comes out of the New Testament, in my paraphrase that literally says, when you look at all of creation, when you wake up and you see the sunrise, when you go out and you smell the fresh air and you hear the birds singing and you look at all of creation, basically God's fingerprints are all over it. And scripture says basically because of God's evidence in everything that is around us, we are without excuse are the words scripture uses. We can simply look outside the window and know there is a God. But there's another reason that I want to talk about tonight. Humans also know that they have been created for a purpose. Now, bear with me for just a moment. How can I make such a declaration? Because we long for purpose. We long for meaning. We long for identity and calling. Why are we here? Or if we personalize that, why am I here? What is the purpose or the meaning of life? It's perhaps the most asked question in all of history. People want to know that they are here to do more than to just take up space on this pretty blue planet. But it's awfully hard to find that purpose. It's awfully hard to find that meaning and to find identity when you are listening to the wrong voices. So we're going to open the Genesis chapter 1 tonight, and we're going to look at what Genesis has to say. We're not going to read it in its entirety, but again, I want us to see verse 1. I want you to read these words with your eyes tonight, not just hear them from this preacher, but I want you to see these words in Scripture that say, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And this one verse tells us something that is truly amazing. It tells us that the beginning includes the beginning of the universe. It means the beginning of God's self-revelation as creator and ultimately redeemer. It is also the beginning of your story and of my story. This one verse tells how things started and who it was that placed all things into motion. I cannot say this enough tonight. God created. God Created, And they may, might just be the two most important words in all of Scripture. Why? Because God does not create on accident. God is purposeful and meaningful. God does not leave things to chance. Our God is a God of order and a God of design. God does not create for confusion. He gives identity and direction to all who would listen. And this evening we're going to further look at the word or what the word has to say about how God created us and we will take a moment to hear from God, our creator, through prayer and through his Holy Spirit. And I want to speak to some here in this room tonight that might be struggling a bit. I want to speak to some who might be struggling with purpose. Maybe you're struggling with identity. Maybe you're caught up in all of the noise and conversation of this world. And because of that, maybe you feel more lost than ever. And I want you to hear me clearly tonight. God created you for his glory. God created you with amazing works in mind for you, and we are going to unpack that more in a moment, but I want us to look at this short video regarding this amazing truth that is God's creative work. Growing up, my grandfather was a gardener. He spent a lot of summers running around in that garden. There was strawberries and green beans, potatoes and corn. There were even a hive of honeybees at the back of the property. My grandpa used to offer me 25 cents for every bird and 50 cents for every rabbit that I would catch in his garden. I would run up and down the rows and never caught a single one, but I sure chased a lot of them away and now realize I was basically working for free. But I loved that garden and I loved growing up in it. 
I sometimes think of that garden when I read that God's culminating creative act was a garden with a man and a woman created and placed at the center of it. God created a garden. And the first man and woman were given the task of caring for it and for the animals that roamed there. That image is so different than the creation accounts of other civilizations. I remember in college taking a Western civilization class and reading some of them. There were stories of the gods creating humans to work as their slaves. There were others about creation emerging from the slain body of the gods. In others, it presents creation as the chance collision of forces in the midst of empty chaos. But the Bible's creation story is so profoundly different. The earth begins dark, empty, and formless. But the Holy Spirit was present, hovering over a world that would soon change. God speaks order, and creation responds. He is a God who creates with intention, with purpose. His word commands each element of a culminating series of creation days. Light, water, land. Stars. Life. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. The Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God would go on to separate the water, the land, and the sky. He filled those spaces with vegetation, fish, birds, and trees, and snow-capped mountains, breaking ocean shores set beneath the setting sun and the rising morning lights. The ocean and the skies were teeming with living creation, and the land was populated with every kind of animal. God saw that it was good, but he had one more creative act left before he rested. God made humanity. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image, to be like us. Male and female, he created them. Unlike the animals that filled the earth, humans, God's image bearers, were given a task. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. I can't help but see my grandparents, side by side, dirt on their hands, planting and harvesting, and the joy of sharing in that work together. Their lives somehow still connected to that first couple's purpose. Purpose may be the oldest of human questions, but there's so many times in life that it can all feel so random, so lacking in purpose. Why are we here? And why does it matter? And what am I supposed to do with it? We aren't the first to feel it, to search for it. But the Bible won't let us read past the first pages of Scripture without insisting that it is there. It has always been there. God creates with purpose, and He calls us into lives of purpose. So what do we do with it? What is our responsibility as image bearers of God, as created by God? What does it mean to be gardeners in this garden of God's creation? Listen. As the video was playing tonight, God dropped something in my heart here that I want us to look at intently for just a moment. Genesis 1. I want us to see something important regarding God's creation. 
talking specifically through the days of creation, as you look at each day, as you look at the works that God is doing, as he creates, as he literally speaks the universe into motion, at the end of each day, God does something specific. What does he do? He looks at things, and he declares them to be good. Amen? We see that throughout the days of creation. And then we get to the creation of man, and I'm going to start in verse uh, 26 of Genesis 1. He says, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I will give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food and to uh, to all the beasts of the earth and the birds of the air and all the creation that move on the ground, everything that has uh, the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. Now look at verse 3. 31, God saw all that he had made, and it was what? Very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, and it was the sixth day. As that video was was playing, and, and the narrator brought about that point, that God declared these things to be good, I think so often we forget that before sin entered this world, God's creation, everything that was moving, everything that had now come to life and come into being, God declared very good. And as I listened to the words of the narrator, and and just God was speaking to me, we need to understand something about our being, about our existence Tonight, Yes, we are born into a world that is now experiencing sin, and we all know what that feels like. Amen? We know what that weight feels like, what that burden feels like, and that is why we're so grateful tonight for the gift of Jesus Christ, amen, that gives us forgiveness of our sin, that we can come to Jesus, that we can call on his name, that we can repent of our sins, we confess our sins, and we know tonight that he is faithful and will do what? Come on, he will do what? Forgive us of our sins, right? I'm grateful for that opportunity tonight that we have through Jesus Christ, but there's something specific that I want us to address this, the, tonight just concerning our existence, and if I have time to get back to the notes, I will, but I want you to hear something tonight. I don't know what your past entails. I don't know where you've been. I know some stories. I know a few details. But I want you to know in this room this evening that God is proud of you, that God loves you. God didn't create you and then say, oh man, did I ever mess up with Rex. Whew. Sorry, because I know I can. You're good, right, buddy? You're good. You know God didn't mess up on you. Okay, I'm just saying But God didn't create him and then say, oh man, did I really mess up on that guy and and, then give that, that red stamp that would say bad, rejected, no good. You see, those are lies of the enemy that the that the devil wants us to believe tonight. Those are ideas that the enemy would try to implant in our minds, in our hearts, and in our souls. And church, he's doing a pretty good job of doing that within our world and culture today. 
That if you don't look a certain way, if you don't talk a certain way, if you don't accept certain things, if you don't move and groove the way the world is trying to pressure you to, that they will dismiss you, they will cancel you, they'll throw you on the back shelf, they'll do everything they can to try to drive you to conform to its ways tonight. But God's message is a totally different message tonight. There are plenty of other different writings out there that would try to talk about the creation of all things, and Genesis is unlike any of them, because in this situation, at number one, it's the truth. Number two, in this situation, we weren't created on accident or for for some oddball. Listen, God created you on purpose, and he created you by and called you good. Called you good. Humankind is the crowning achievement, if you will, of God's creation tonight. And the devil would like you to believe otherwise. The devil wants you to stay lost. The devil wants you to stay in a situation where you don't know who you are, where you don't know where you're going, where you don't know the meaning of everything that is going on. Can I tell you something? That is why God gave us his word that works as a road map, that works as that special revelation to let us know that, yes, we are created with meaning. Yes, we are created with purpose. Yes, we are created with identity. And yes, we are created and declared to be good tonight. God did not create you for sin. Do you believe that tonight? One of us, two of us. Come on. God did not create humankind for sin. He didn't create us just so that we would end up ultimately having to perish. No, we know the story. We know that the enemy comes in and he twists the words of God and sin enters the picture and the rest is history tonight. No, he didn't create you for sin. He created you for glory. And he has given us the opportunity, church. He has given us a way to return back to fellowship with him tonight. I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. I think the most tragic verses in all of Scripture come out of Genesis chapter 3 when mankind has now taken that step to sin, when mankind took that step to receive what God said not to receive, and they hear God walking through the garden. And instead of running to him, instead of saying, it's God, he's back, he's in the garden, instead of having that, that special moment with God in that, in that time, instead they run and they hide. Why? Because the Bible said their eyes had been opened. They knew they were naked, and they tried to sow fig leaves to cover themselves, to cover their, their shame, to cover their nakedness. And in that moment, the separation that sin had created between God and his creation was realized. But there's something that is very important that also happens in that moment. As God's creation is now hiding from him, he could have kept strolling through the garden. He could have kept going on knowing full well what they had done, but instead he does something special. What does he do? Say it louder. He calls them out. out. Where are you? Where are you? Even in that situation where God could have kept going, instead he reaches out to Adam and Eve. He hears the story. And it says that he does something pretty specific for them. He creates for them a new covering. Not one of fig leaves, but a covering now made out of animal skin, meaning an animal had to give its life in order for Adam and Eve to be covered for their shame to be covered, and it's a foreshadow of what God would do in the future through his own son, Jesus Christ, whose blood has now become our ultimate atonement that covers all sin today. But God called them out of hiding. God called them out of that position. God called to them and said, hey, I am here. And he could have left them in that situation, and and he could have absolutely left them to their own uh, uh, agendas and, and, and to their own demise. But church, that's not the God we serve tonight. The God we serve tonight loves you, loves me, is willing to go the distance for us tonight. Are you hearing me tonight? 
is willing to go the distance for you and I. We don't deserve it this evening, church, because of our sin, because of our wrongdoing, but God, in his love and his mercy, because of what he uh, had planned for us, he sends his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, that you and I could be forgiven so that we could be set free tonight. I am so thankful this evening for the work that our God has done, but I want to be clear in something tonight. When God created you, when God knit you together in your mother's womb, when God formed you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, as scripture says. When God put us together, he did not put us together and say, oh man, I really messed up with that one. Whoo, I wish I could get a redo on, on Larry Stones. You know, I tell you what, that guy, no. No, not at all. And I know I'm kind of being silly with a couple of those statements, but I'm being very serious because I think there's a lot of people out there today when they look in the mirror, they don't see good. All they see is bad. I think there's a lot of people out there today, if they were honest, they're looking for purpose. They're looking for hope, looking for identity, looking for direction and they don't know which way to turn. They've been listening to all the words of this world and church, the world is trying its best to lead a younger generation down a road that will lead them to nothing but destruction and despair. Mark my words. And now is the day that we need to rise up and not only as as. Uh, disciple makers, but we need to rise up and we need to know what the word of God has to say regarding creation about how we were created and what God did in those first moments of, of, of the existence of the universe. We need to be encouraging folks to get back in this book. Because science doesn't have it all figured out. Come on. Because as many microscopes and as many different measuring instruments that we can throw out there, we can try to do our best to try to describe it. Well, God has given us the answer. It's right here tonight. And church, we've seen it happen in our culture. The further we have come from God's word, the further we have gone from, from accepting his word as truth and such as a culture, we have seen the lack of identity. We have seen all of these different things begin to infiltrate our culture, the lack of morality. All of that is because we have chosen as a society to walk away from the truth that is God's word. And church, if we could only get back to those first few words of this book that say, in the beginning, God created, maybe, just maybe, we might begin to accept again that we are not accidents on this planet. Maybe, just maybe, we could find that God-given purpose again. Maybe, and just maybe, we could begin to remember that we are his sons, that we are his daughters, that we would begin to reject the lies of the enemy tonight. God created you in his image. He declares his creation of mankind is very good. Don't let the enemy ever tell you otherwise. And should the devil try to begin to poke on your brain or be kind of try to come in and poke on your, your, your thoughts or your feelings, if he tries to come in there and begin to uh, try to convince you of something other than church, listen to me, you need to get back in the word of God. You need to rebuke those words that the enemy are trying to implant in your mind. And you need to remind good old Satan. There ain't nothing good about Satan. Let me rewind that statement. You just need to remind that old devil that you are God's son, that you are God's daughter with a God-given purpose, a God-given identity, and a God-given mission on this earth. And if he tries it again, then you rebuke him again in the name of Jesus Christ. But you listen to what the word of God has to say about you and has to say about your beginning tonight. God created you on purpose, for a purpose, to fulfill his mission his plan for your life, made in his image, made in his likeness tonight, that we might know him, that we might know his love, 
that we might experience his presence, that we might have fellowship with him tonight. We serve an awesome God tonight. And I want us to go ahead and move into a time of prayer. Leanne, if I could get your help on the keyboard this evening. And I want to stay on this focus of purpose, of meaning, of identity. And I want us to close our eyes and bow our heads tonight. And I want us to consider that point for just a moment, what I talked about. God didn't create you for sin. God didn't create you and then say, whoops. God created you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. And maybe you're here tonight and maybe you've been struggling a little bit with meaning. Maybe you've been struggling a little bit with purpose. Maybe you've been struggling a little bit with identity. Maybe there's been some things in your life that you have allowed being sin that have separated you in your fellowship with God, that have separated you from his presence, that has distracted you from who God is calling you to be. We sang a song tonight that said, draw me close to you and never let me go. The chorus of that song simply said, you are all I want. You're all I've ever needed. Help me to know that you are near. I think sometimes that's all our world needs to be reminded of, that God is near. In fact, God is calling out names. God is calling out to this world through the gift of his son, Jesus. Just like he did with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, Jesus Christ carried that cross to the hilltop at Calvary and gave his life shed his blood, the blood that would become our new atonement, that covering that would forgive us of all sins and wrongdoing, or that would provide forgiveness of our sins and wrongdoings. And maybe you're here tonight, and again, you're feeling that sense of loss, of purpose, of, of meaning. Maybe, maybe you've been in the trenches so long, you've been going through the motions, Maybe somebody has been trying to feed you a lie about who you are, about what God's called you to do. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Just right where you're at, if that's you, you'd say, you know, Pastor, I've, I've been kind of struggling. Maybe there's been some changes in life unexpected things that have caused you to have to shift gears, whatever the case might be. Can I tell you something? God has a plan and purpose for you. He's proud of you. He loves you, and he wants to remind you of that. But you'd say tonight, Pastor, I could use some prayer. Just right where you're at, raise your hand so I can see you. Pastor, I, amen, 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 amen. And Pastor, I could use some prayer. I wonder if you'd do something tonight. When God called out to Adam and Eve, he said, where are you? Adam and Eve had to respond. I believe the Spirit of God is calling out to some hearts tonight, and I wonder if you would help us by responding to God taking a step of faith and saying, I'm just needing to hear from God tonight. I want to listen to the right voices. I want to listen to what God has for me. I wonder if, 
if there's somebody that would take that step of faith and come to these altars and say, Pastor, I could use some prayer tonight. Thank you, Rex, for leading the way. Pastor, I could use some prayer tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Church, I need some help tonight. Can we stand behind these that are in the altars? Can we stand to our feet? And if you would feel led to come and pray for these in the altars, I'd like to have at least one person with every individual right now in these altars. God's spirit is moving in hearts right now. God's spirit right now is reminding of purpose and of meaning. Holy Spirit, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would begin to move on hearts, move in minds, move in souls right now. God, and begin to renew that identity, begin to renew, Father, that, that purpose. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that those in these altars right now would begin to receive Father, what you have for them. Oh, God, remind them, God, Lord, that they are your creation, God, that they are good in your eyes, Father. Lord, that you are proud of them tonight. Lord, I pray your anointing upon them tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, for restoration, God. I pray against the lies of the enemy that have been trying to creep in in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that you would give, Lord, only what you can give tonight in the name of Jesus. Come on, press in tonight. Press in tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Press in tonight and receive from Jesus. Can we just extend a hand towards these altars right now? And can we just begin to pray for God to move in hearts and minds right now in the name of Jesus? Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Do a new work only you can do in this moment, God. You truly are all that we want. And in you, find we find, uh, we, we find that hope, God. Lord, you are that foundation, that rock, God, that we need. Our stability tonight, Father. Touch them tonight in Jesus' name. Touch them tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come on, just receive from him. Spirit of God, move in this place. Spirit of God, move in this place. Hallelujah. As we respond to your word tonight. You're all I've ever needed And you're all I want Help me know you are near Make that your prayer. Come on, I want you to sing it out tonight. And you're all I want Thank you, Lord. And you're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. Cause you're all I want. Thank you, Lord. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, God. Help us, God, to know that you are near, not only in this moment, but God, in those moments where we're searching, where we're looking for that direction, God, I pray that we would turn to you in such moments. Father, that we would listen to your voice, listen to your word, listen to your Holy Spirit, because we know, God, that you are speaking to us. So we're here, God, to listen, to hear from you tonight. And I thank you, God, for those responding tonight, saying, God, I need you tonight. Help us not only tonight, but tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and so forth to be tuned in to what you would have to say to us, to be tuned in to what you would say about us, over us, God. Help us to tune out the lies of the enemy, the falsehoods of this world, and to remember, to remember, God, that you are our creator, our heavenly father, that we are your children designed on purpose for a purpose for your glory in Jesus name in Jesus name